Last time, with check the effects on the Smart Rail series, you have this one would go off in that direction, and the other train would be coming off in this direction. So this is the whole thing with the intersection. So let's take a look at what it's like with just the intersection. So here is the actual intersection cut out from there. So these one-way ramps with the yellow concrete on them, what this is for is essentially if you're going into the intersection, if you get any kind of bump back up on the ramps or on the turns around here, right around here, then uh, this would prevent it from falling out of the intersection and have it continue on in the correct direction. What these do here, the ones with the red concrete, are to prevent it from going back into the intersection for some whatever wrong reason. Let's say, for, I don't know, there's an animal or something that's on your rail, like a cow is on the rail, and, it, and your train gets bumped by the cow and ends up going backwards. Then what happens is it'll hit this ramp, go up it, and then it'll continue on without interfering with any of the redstone here. There it goes up and over. And there it goes, over to station number two and three. There's your ticket, station number two. See, okay, see here? Here's an example of a cart that's getting some back, uh, some uh, bump back. Watch what happens in this case, it'll go up and it'll go on its merry way back. Okay, let's try from this point here, station number two and three. Now, what we have over there is station number one and station number four which was our first point of origin so let's put in a ticket station number one and we'll let this go and we'll have another my car train put on the thing here and station number four and let that go there we go and let's see the first train it's going over to station number one here comes the second train And it's going to station number four. There we go. It's going in the right direction. Where are we at here? Station number one. Ticket, station number one. Let me go this way. It's going on some way. This thing's going to drop off because it's I made like this on purpose. But this is station four. Right there. Let's go down and get your ticket. That's station number four. Saw that, that was blue. Now you may be looking at this and asking me, hey, check, well, this is great, but what happens if we have one train that's in the processing ramp over here and another one over here, or maybe another one over there as well? What do we do to make sure that we don't have any collisions? Well, that's for the next tutorial. Hey everybody, it's Check the FX coming at you with another Minecraft tutorial, and today we're continuing on with the Smart Rail series. In this tutorial, we're going to be putting on the very last primary functional portion of the Smart Rail switching mechanism. So we've already created the binary brain, which switches the rail. We've done the processing ramp, which allows us to stop the train, so in order to return the ticket back to the train, we have done the buffer ramp. And then we've also done the three-way intersection. Now we're doing this portion which is going to allow our trains autonomously to stop for each other when they arrive at the intersection. So let's say we have, uh, let's take a look at a real life situation. If you have a three-way stop at an intersection where for automobiles, typically what happens is if two cars arrive at the intersection one after the other or simultaneously, one car would give priority to the other. Typically first come first serve but usually it would be someone on the right hand side. So if, if, if you're doing right of way, according to, let's say, uh, the traffic rules in Canada or the United States, typically they would wait for the person on the right hand side to go first. Now, of course, in countries like Britain or in South Asia, that would be different because they follow the British method of, uh, or the British uh, way of driving on the other side of the road. So I'm not too sure if that would apply there, but we're going to be following the North American standard where we're driving on the right side of the road. So this would allow our trains to autonomously stop for one another at the intersection, much like you would have at a real life 
automobile road intersection where the drivers would decide, okay, who's going to go first and who is going to go second. So without further ado, let's get to the tutorial. Now the resources required to build this are quite simple. You're going to need enough of your basic building block. In this case, I'm using stone. It has to be a conductive one, one that conducts redstone current. You're going to need some redstone dust, redstone torches, redstone repeaters, and redstone comparators. Now the remaining components that go with this build have already been built with components such as the processing ramp, the buffer ramp, the binary frame, and the intersection that we did before. So we will be hooking that up a little bit later on in the build part of the tutorial. You'll also need, of course, your tickets for testing purposes. This is only for testing. You're not going to be using this in the build itself. So here we have a little demo of the mechanism itself. Uh, the main portion is this part over here. You can see here. And this is just a little quick demo that I used, you know, a little testing area. These are all testing parts here, here, and here to demonstrate how this would work in a very small area. Okay. Uh, so we will be building this later and hooking it up to the, the whole big system afterwards. So let me go ahead and show you exactly what this represents. So let's pretend that this is your processing ramp over here, here, and here. And we have your comparator that would power the processing ramp as well as your hopper where you receive your ticket back into the train. Now over here, this is just a place where we can just store the uh, tickets. This is just for testing purposes. Uh, this is not something you would include in your build. And, but this represents when the train has uh, safely gone across the intersection. Okay, that's what this detector rail would represent. This button over here, as well as this one here and here, each one is for their uh, respective entry points. So entry point one, two, and three. We could say this as being station number four, station number two and three, and station number one. I know that might be confusing if you haven't seen my previous tutorials, which is why I recommend you do see the previous tutorials before going on into this thing so that you'll be able to understand. Now, each of these buttons represents the detector rail that will be just after the buffer ramp and just before the binary brain. So that's what this one is. This is the one that tells you that I've gone over the binary brain and I've entered into the processing ramp. That's what these are. And then this one says, okay, I'm out of the processing ramp and I have gone through the intersection. Okay, that's what those three uh, detector rails are indicating for each of their respective points of origin or entry points. So let's get started with our demo. Let's say we had this one on first. So this train arrived first and this train arrived second. But for whatever reason, this guy received his ticket first. So if you go and put the ticket in there. Nothing happens. Why? Because this guy got it first. So first come, first serve. This guy gets his ticket. He goes off and then he passes over the intersection and then this guy gets to go. See, so he stopped there. And then what happens is also these ones are forced to stop as well until this guy continues over the intersection. Now let's say we have uh, number two here. This The middle one, it arrives first. Uh, this one is second and this one is third. Now, one of these will have a priority over the, uh, a lower priority than all of the others, but let's just go ahead and do this. So, we have, let's say, this one comes in first. Uh, so, this one gets his ticket first, and this one gets his ticket second. The, this guy gets ticket first, but he came first. So, you see none of them. So, these little uh, lamps here, they're like stoplights. So, you see the red stained glass on there. I'm just having those represent a stoplight. So, these guys have the stoplight while well, this guy has the go so he has no stoplight so that means when he gets like that here it goes and now the next one's going to go and then the third one's going to go and then that's it now if one of them just appears to uh, you know just arrive let's say this one arrived here and nothing else has arrived those two have a stoplight, but the moment I put this in, he goes, and then after a short time, the stoplights disappear. So let's try another scenario. Let's say all three of them arrive, one after the other, right, or simultaneous, whatever the case is. 
And so we know these two have a stoplight. So let's do this guy gets his ticket first. This guy gets a ticket second. This guy gets his ticket third. And then this guy gets his ticket again because of the buffer ramp. Let's say someone is on the buffer ramp. And you can still see every one of them is going one at a time, right? So this is a very important feature. So all this just makes sure that there are no collisions whatsoever. So now that we've demonstrated this, let's go on to the whole building of this and integrating this with our main intersection. So for this tutorial, we're going to need the items in my hotbar here. We're going to need some building blocks that conduct redstone current. In this case, I'm using stone. We're going to use some redstone dust, redstone torch, redstone repeaters, and redstone comparators. And also for testing, we're going to need the tickets we had from our previous tutorials. So this is merely just, just for testing after we're done. So to start off, we're going to have a length of blocks about 13 blocks long or wide. And we're going to have these protrusions here. This one being the absolute middle. So this would be around block number 7. So if we go like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then this one here would be th the third one away from here, over from there. And this one, same thing, third one away from over here. So we have three from there, three from there, and seven on from either side. That's where the protrusions are going to come out. And this is where your inputs are going to be. Now I've gone ahead and I've also taken these inputs ahead of time and uh, made my redstone wire already. This is going to be coming from your latch on the buffer ramp. And it's going to be from this particular redstone torch and that's this is exactly where it's going to be positioned and you're going to take that out and around over here like so and then all the way down putting a repeater every 14 redstone dust or redstone wire that you put down so it'd be like so what it'd be like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 and then a repeater you can put a repeater a little bit further but I like to put it after the 14th rather than after the 15th one just to make sure that if you happen to have a uh, issue or whatnot with miscounting then it doesn't affect it too much so you have a little bit of tolerance that way also you're gonna want to make sure that this is built underneath the intersection so we have the intersection here and so this is gonna be about let's say about seven below this rail here so we have this these blocks of uh, diorite here, polished diorite, and this is going to be seven below the block of diorite. Now we're going to start off by putting down our repeaters. So first of all, we have one repeater here, two and three. Then we're going to put some more repeaters, each pointing into the sides of this repeater, over, uh, of the repeaters that we just put down already. And I'm having a little bit of trouble trying to navigate here, but that's okay. So now we have that on one tick, this goes on two ticks, and this goes on four ticks. Then we're going to put our redstone dust like so, oops, like that, and like this as well as in the inputs on here. So you should have all the redstone repeaters having redstone dust in their inputs. Next from this side we're going to take a block like this and put a block like this and take another one out like this. Redstone dust here, here, and here. These are our outputs. Okay, next we're going to take our input from here and we're going to just bring this over, whoops, just like this and up and into this. Now we take our redstone dust and put it all the way across like so until you get something like that. Next we're going to take this one out and this is also going to go up and over like that. But it's going to go under here. So we can take this out like that and actually let's bring this uh, up and over this way with that. Uh, that works just fine, just like that. There we go. So then we're going to take this going all the way across like so. There. There we go. So we got this one going into here and this one going all the way around into here. Oops. 
I am in a bit of a cramped space, guys, so sorry if I'm jerking around too much. But anyways, um, next we're going to have to take this, and we're going to put that on that side, as well as that side there. So let's take that out, and we're going to take it out like this, and bring it out over here. All right, same thing over this side, out here, like that. And we're going to take a block like this so it cuts off that circuit at that point, as well as over here, so this cuts off of there. Okay, next we're going to take redstone dust, bring it all the way around here, take another one like this, and like this, all the way around, and let's take a look and see what we have. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I believe. Let me just do it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So exactly 14. So that means this should also be 14 uh, as well. So that is our circuit for locking the mechanism. So if we want to, what we can do now to test it is get ourselves a lever. And we can just uh, break this off here and here. And put this on here. And then switch this on. And you can see it locks those ones okay I'm gonna reconnect this and then I can put my rest on my lever here put this and you see it locks those two over there and then over on this side I can put this there and you see it locks those two over there now we have to get our inputs for this part here okay so we're gonna connect those up and just by going like this and you have a connection right here again this is going to the latch at the buffer ramp, okay, like so, and this should be about 14. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, it's under 14, that's good. And same thing on this side, like that, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's just enough, actually, okay. So, we have just enough redstone wire and it's going in. Now this side, of course, this looks like more than 14. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Take that out or repeat it in, okay? That's gonna be too short. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so we're set on that case there, okay? So next we want to have the outputs. So this is maybe a seem a little tricky, but uh, essentially what we want to do is have an output that feeds into the side of this comparator. So you have you'll have something like this with a repeater that goes into uh, or redstone or dust that goes in like this. We have a repeater in like this, and then that goes out like that. So also what we have to do is put a uh, a something like this over here so we're going to put a pulse extender like this okay and then we're going to feed our inputs into this pulse pulse extender over here okay same thing and we're going to do this for all three sides so let's take here we're going to put in another one here and i'm going to do this and i'll be right back with all of them Okay, so there's our station there, and now we're going to do on this one here. And there we have our third one there. So we have one there, one over here, whoops, one over here, and also one that's going to be over here. So all three of them have this pulse extender with a repeater and rest on dust that point into the side of this comparator at full strength. So next we have to feed in an output into this. So let's take... Uh, a wire that's going to come down from here. Uh, I'll see if this is right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so one that comes down from here. Uh, so we can do like this if we want to. Let's get the signal there sooner. Like that. Okay. And another one on that side. Like that. Okay, there's our other output. And then we have our third output, which is going to be from here. So let's do that. 
Okay, that's a little close to that, so we're going to bring this off to a side a bit. So now this is going to go into here. Okay, so that's our output for that one. Okay, now depending on how this is going to go, we could raise it or we could keep it at that level, we could lower it, whatever the case is. Okay, as long as it goes into the right spot. Okay, so now we want to attach these outputs. So let's just move this back a little bit and uh, I'm going to have one that comes out of here, right? And there's going to be one that comes out on this side too, like, like that, okay? So one there and one there. Let's put, let's put it over a little bit, okay? This one here has to turn off that one and this one here. Well, this one has to turn off that and that over there. So let's... This one. So let's take this output from here. So this is coming from here, and this is feeding into that. So we can actually uh, then just take this up and over like this, and then feed that into this one here. So let's bring this up like that, and uh, take this up and around. that like that okay so then we have a line that is going to come from here up let's put a repeater down here and then that's going to go like this and put a repeater in here okay another repeater here it's going to go like that and this is going to come down into that okay so that way we have one that goes that way and one that goes that way okay also from this one we're gonna have to have this turned off as well so for this one also we're gonna take another block that goes out this way and let's put this up oops get to here like that and like that okay so we're gonna take a redstone repeater, not a, a repeater here. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then repeater. One, and then we're going to continue doing this. So one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, and there we go. That hooks up nicely. So we have our two outputs. So we have one going that way, and then one going that way. Okay. Now. This one here, so we have that one there that was hooked up. So that one ends up getting to that and that. Okay. Now, let's see, we have this middle one, which also goes to that, and also needs to go to this one here. We also have this one over here, which goes down and which has to go over to that as well. So let's take this one out. So we're going to bring this up and go over like that okay and uh let's bring this up here a bit a little uh right around and this is going to go right around to here okay so we're going to put a redstone repeater there and we're going to take another output here so we go all the way out here. So we have, let's see here, how many we have here? So we have, uh, this one is coming out of here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So put 15 here. So that's going to go one way. Now we're going to put a repeater here just to signify that this is a one way thing. And then we have this going up like this. Like that. So that should be under 14. So see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's perfect. Okay. That's just under 4. That's, un, that's well under 14. Okay. Now, uh, over here, let's see, we have this one going up for that. And this one here is to go after. 
to the dot and this as well so this is also have to go after this one so let's find our wire so we have this so let's click up and over and we have to put that into here so this is our output for that so let's take this out around like here and we're going to put that into this over here so let's see this is what there you go a little bit further more like that and like that there we go we're going to take a repeater out from here and then bring your redstone dust all the way this repeater over there and bring this out here let's just count and see but one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that's more than enough and then you have your full strength going into that there we go so let's just do a quick little test of this thing so if i have this one turned on so if i hit this button i'm going to see that i should have a redstone current going into here right we do and a redstone current oops it goes into here and we don't do have that because we didn't connect this so let's make sure we connect this up there we we have one into that okay now let's go ahead and turn this off okay and that should slowly disable your current going into that until it turns off oops something's not right okay so i should be able to reset this over here and over here okay there we go and we should see this over here that's now gone and this over here that's now gone okay now if i push the button on this side here we should see uh current going into the buffer so i get to the processing wraps comparator over here now we do and another one over here which we do so if i turn this one off again if i reset it oops this way there we go now nothing over here and nothing over here perfect now on to the next one here so let's do it on this so if i go back to the buffer ramp on here uh, i think that i do this already i think i'm out of that there that there's okay Oop, that one's set so let's go back here reset this and just to make sure i did the right one let's go back here okay set this one here that should make sure that that's turned on and that's turned on there we go now if i try to turn this on whoops wait that now over here you can see that this one is still enabled so that one has no current going in which means it's enabled and this one's still disabled and that one's disabled so that means that the comparator is not going to turn on and power the rail here the processing ramps rail when it gets powered there so that's the issue, that's the thing there okay so let's go ahead and reset uh, this one here and i can go and reset this one here and we should be back to normal again so that's done there and that's done there and that's done over there so that's good all three seem to be functioning properly and now we can actually just test these so a small change to the input section on here so um, this is where we have our output coming out from the three-way stop mechanism over to here and uh remember how i had it going into this comparator well now we don't have it going into the comparator anymore I, what i've done is i've routed it around so that we have it going into this hopper over here 
par par with uh, a tick with a, re a repeater on full ticks on all four, and also we have a another repeater hard uh, boosting the signal here and bringing the power up to here. Another thing to notice is the orientation of the hoppers. Remember now that the hoppers previously were pointing down one into the other. Now these hoppers are pointing into the side of the wall. The reason for this is to make sure that the hoppers are only operating on one tick, meaning the pull tick. So that's going to make sure that you have less of a chance of items just flowing right through the hoppers and not getting stuck in them. So we want the items to be locked up in the hopper or prevented from going into the hopper altogether, which is why we're having it oriented in this manner, otherwise that will not work. Also, another addition is we have a detector rail here that's been placed with a comparator coming out and the signal being boosted, and then we have redstone wire going here, two comparators on full four ticks each for eight ticks, and then we have this repeater going into this block right there. What this does is when the this when these are locked by the four ways by the three way stop, what's gonna happen is that the item that comes the ticket that's coming in from the binary brain is not going to be able to go up and in, it's not gonna have to take the item in here. Instead it's gonna have the train go back with the item and if it finds the item is still in there, it's going to go back up into the train. Uh, so it's going to go back up the ramp and then try to put it in again. And they'll keep on doing this until the hopper is unlocked. What was happening before, if I had the comparator disabled, then the item would just go right through, even if the comparator was disabled. So we didn't want that to happen. So we were having a little bit of a problem there. So this is the fix for that. So just make sure you implement that in your build. Also make sure you've got your, um, your, your, your pulse extender here. And here we have the whole thing again. And you can see we have Transit Biker who is joining us. He's got his own YouTube channel as well. And um, so he's going to be aiding us by taking care of the controls here. Uh, we have built this little granite uh, thing with lines, uh, redstone going down just to make it easier for us to activate the ramps from a remote location. So this is not part of the official build. This is just for test purposes and for demonstration purposes. So you can see here, in this case it goes to this beast ramp here and it goes over to this redstone block. And this redstone dust powers this block and then you get the repeaters going off and they hit into this, which will power this. So you have, this will get launched first and then this will get launched second. On the others, so that's for the uh, left side, that's station number one. Station number two and three, you have a simple line that goes all the way down here and feeds right into your ramp here. Then you have uh, for the station number four on the left, if you have a left, so it is the right side, that's the left, right, left, center, and right, I'm being a little bit dyslexic here, <laughs> going all the way down. And here we have your one for this ramp here, and that'll launch that one, okay? So we're going to be testing the three-way stop here. Okay, so transit, I'm going to give you the go-ahead to uh, launch those things. Go ahead and do left and then center. Just one up, just one after the other. No timing needed. There we go. Here comes left. And the center one is coming as well. Left is stopped. Center is stopped. Left is going. And here it's going. Okay, it's passed. Here comes the other left, and here comes center, center is going, and it's going in the right direction there, and now we should have the other left go, there it goes, there's the other left, without any collision whatsoever, nice, nice, so let's go take a look at our tickets here, so we have station number one, what's your ticket, station number one, awesome, now we have to go to this one here. We have station number two and three. What's your ticket? Station number two. There we go. And send this back here. And over on this side, did we have a train here? Yes, we do. Let's see if it's still stuck on here. I had to get a few, a few rails here so that it stays on here. Okay, and let's go down. We have a few trains here from previous testing. Station number four. That's station number four. Yep, actually we have station number four from our previous test as well. So we'll keep that from falling off so it's a little bit easier for us to do that. 
Boom guns. Great. So let's go set up again. Uh, can you turn them all off? Transit. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go station number. Let's put this. Let's change it up a bit. Okay. We're going to go station number. Uh, let's go station number three from here. Okay. So I'm going to chain this so we're, I'm just labeling this so I can see which is station number three and which is what which one is coming from what okay then we have this one here and we're gonna put this to station number four so let's do that it's going to go to station number four like that there we go and now we're gonna do this one over here Okay, this is going to go to station number one. Uh, it went to station number one last time. Let's go to station number four on this side. So let's put station number four over here. There it is. Okay, and finally we have this one, which is already set, and that's going to station number two and three. Okay, so that's station number three. I don't think we had one going to station number one yet. Or did we? I don't think we did. Let's have this go to station number one instead. We'll change it up. Okay. So this is going to go to station number one. Okay. Oh, actually, yes, that's station number one. So for station number one, station number four, and we have station number three and station number four. Okay, is that three? Yes, that's station three. So we have two going that way one going that way and another one going that way okay so transit i want you to launch all three of them no specific order needed notice so keep an eye on uh, two on left and right uh let's on right and center i'll take uh, a look left there it goes left left is going first let's see which one goes next Okay, center is going next. Left is reloaded. We have the next one is going to be left again. So left goes next, and it goes off to its station. We have two on four. Okay, and finally we should have right let go as well. There goes right. Okay, let's take a look at our stations. Transit, you want to take a look at the uh, this one here, and I'll take a look at the one on the other end. You can check a look at center as well. Okay, so let's take a look. I have on station number four. I have station number four here, and over here again, another one for station number four. Are those other carts? Whoops! Looks like they bounced back because of what happened with that previous one there. Station one to station one. You want to check center? Center is down this side here. It's okay. It's okay. This is this for the other side. So we have station number three at station number two and three. There we go. So that works. So we've tried two co two combinations of what we can do with this, where we have two trains coming together and they stop for each other, and then we also have tried with all three trains launched, simul like in no particular order. So we've. I've tested this already. A special thanks to Ruan Goofy for coming on and helping me test this out. He was, um, he's not really great at Redstone, but he is really good help, and he helped me out by uh, keeping, by you know, switching these and watching the trains and everything and seeing where they launched. And he, uh, so he was a very big help with that. And I'd like to give him a special thanks to that. Very special thanks to uh, Transit also, Transit Biker for coming out as well and helping out with this. So. That's it. That's it for today's tutorial. Thanks for coming out and watching us. Uh, please tune in next time where we're going to continue on with the Smart Rail series. In which case, we're going to start looking at making this big old mess look nice. Because so, right now, it doesn't really look that great now, does it? Uh, for the most part, I dreamed of putting this underground. But still, 
we had to make it look nice because there's only so much you can do after a while with your build. It's so impressive after uh, after a certain time, but I don't think anyone wants to go looking at redstone. So we got to hide this redstone dust and all the comparators and repeaters. So that's more work up ahead as we try and make this thing aesthetically pleasing. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. This is Check the Effects signing off. I will see you in the next video. Peace.